Kick back and relax with Fortnite's summer fun, and it looks like Fall Guys and Sonic is having some sort of collaboration. All that and more, my name's Ethos, and these are your top five stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Summertime is finally here, but if you're trying to enjoy the comforts of the summer without the sun beaming down on you in your air-conditioned home, then why not participate in Fortnite's No Sweat Summer happening now until August the 9th at 9 a.m. ET. Players will be able to enjoy a special quests, thirst-quenching rewards, and much more sweat-drenched fun. Coming in at number 4, the free-to-play roller skating game Roller Champions will be cancelled after Season 3 despite their very recent launch in May of 2022. This is the latest Ubisoft closing rumor coming courtesy of Jess Grubb on the latest Xbox Air podcast. Since the game's launch, it received several seasons of content and is even in tracking better than Hyperscape, yet another one of Ubisoft's cancelled titles. Hyperscape was another free-to-play title, but a 100-player Battle Royale FPS set in the future. That game launched in July of 2020 and then shut down in April 2022. In addition, Ubisoft also recently canceled their plans for a Battle Royale-styled Ghost Recon frontline game. At this rate, Ubisoft is starting to build an unreliable narrative, games that are being canceled as soon as they come outside of the gate, and some are just being forgotten altogether. It kind of looks a little bit scary there over at Ubisoft. And moving into story number three, following the announcement that Minecraft would be rejecting NFTs, the main reason being that it would create an atmosphere that is opposite of Minecraft's vision of inclusivity and community, other student questioned where Epic Games stood on the matter and asked if the online store would make a similar decision and perhaps of getting rid of all NFTs on their online store. Wishful thinking, but of course a major change would not happen. The CEO of Epic Games, Tim Sweeney, responded to the question with, developers should be free to decide how to build their games and you are free to decide whether to play them. I believe that stores and operating system makers shouldn't interfere by forcing their views onto others, and we definitely will. All in all, he does make a good point here. NFTs do not currently go against any sort of editorial guidelines in place, and Epic is only profiting from hosting NFT-inspired games on their platforms. They are there for players to play if they would like, or just to ignore them just as well. The cryptocurrency market, including NFTs, blockchain, and even Web3 gaming, is still relatively new, so it might stick around and become adopted, or it might just be rejected by everybody and hold no real place in the video game field. For now, time will only tell. And coming in at story number two, many fans have been eagerly awaiting the return of the popular Fall Guys Sonic the Hedgehog skin. Those recently learned that the skin would be returning in August in honor of Sonic's 30th anniversary. Luckily, it looks like that's not everything that Fall Guys has in store for this brand new update, as Fall Guys Data Miner recently uploaded a video that showcased a Fall Guys and Sonic crossover stage. In the video, players can see the iconic Sonic the Hedgehog Green Hill Zone levels with similar colors, designs, and game mechanics. Sadly, as of right now, this is all that players will have to go out on until the official announcement is made from me. Tonic. And coming at number one, your biggest story of this week, it looks like once again Bungie are bringing their lawyers as they have filed another lawsuit against a Destiny 2 cheater who had broken the game's term of service through cheating but had also made threats against the studio's office employees. Luca Leone apparently streamed himself using cheats in Destiny 2 and created multiple accounts to evade bans for violation of the game's limited software license agreement, which Bungie describes as serial fraud. The issue only got worse when Leone then allegedly made a threat against the studio on social media. The studio quotes one of his tweets where he posted an image of an employee badge that belonged to a community manager named Dylan Gaffner also known as DMG. Leon then followed that tweet by adding, I just realized I'll be moving to a place that's 30 minutes away from DMG, and then added, he is not safe. The threats only continued as Leon threatened to quote-unquote burn down the company's office building. The lawsuit then quotes another tweet that the user openly asked if anybody quote-unquote able to commit arson at a later specified location in an area of Seattle, and quote, I'm in Washington, DM me, Leon replies. If it's Bungie's HQ, you get a discount. Some of these tweets have been deleted since, and Leon has also made his account private. Bungie is taking the matter very seriously and is asking the court to ensure that Leon will be permanently enjoined from harassing, stalking, and otherwise engaging in unwanted solicitation behavior with Bungie, its employees, or Destiny 2 players. Some might think that this lawsuit might be a little bit too much, but in the instances, a threat should always be taken seriously, especially thinking back to the Kyoto Animation Studio arson attack that happened back in 2019 in Japan after a disgruntled fan thought his artwork was stolen. In addition to open threats, Bungie also states that Leon infringed on Bungie's copyright in Destiny 2 as an audiovisual work each time he used the cheat software to create an unauthorized derivative work of Destiny 2. Because of this, Bungie is asking for 150k for each copyrighted work infringed or the amount to be later proved at trial. 
The studio then goes on to ask for an additional $2,500 for each time Leon had used the cheat software in the game. People should honestly realize by now that Bungie isn't pulling their punches. This is especially proven by the point that Bungie sued a Destiny YouTuber just recently as well for more than over $7 million for allegedly impersonating the company. And that moves us to the question of the week. With Bungie just going to war, attacking cheaters and people who harass their devs, and on top of that, attacking people who've impersonated their company, let me know in the comment section below, what the hell is going on with the Destiny 2 community? What is what what is it about you think about this game that's causing these type of characters to appear in this? Or is it just because Bungie is actively taking the fight to them that it's become more visible? And it happens in a lot of other communities. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And these are your top five stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Don't forget to check out MMOBomb.com for giveaways and the latest news. My name's Ethos, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, everyone.